was it was over, but now it's just begun. <laughs> it's only just begun. Here we, here we are. Uh oh, there we go. Sorry, no rest for the wicked. Money don't go on. Oh. Are you guys? They were talking about train, doing the training, and I was wondering. I yeah. know the Spartacus guys and the. Da Vinci's code, they keep them on a strict diet. Are they doing that with you guys? They um, you? They, it's not, I mean, it's not that they keep us on a strict diet or whatnot. I mean, they, you know, they, they have uh, kind of goals, you know, uh, creative goals, and, uh, and you either do them or you don't. Uh, and, and depending on whether you're, I mean, in fact, I, I was just told that I have to go off of any kind of diet because they said that I'm like too good shit now, so I'm going back to or something. So, you know, to me, uh, I, you know, I always stay in good shape, uh, but for this, I definitely, you know, uh, kicked it up a notch. I mean, there's not, it's not like uh, you can go to the grocery store in this world, uh, so there is, uh, you know, there is a nature of being on a and not having a lot of supplies and being sick and they didn't have safe drinking water. Um, you know, the Bahamas is actually a really tough place to get drinking water because there's small islands that don't have very high elevation and not very large forests that there's, there's not much clean drinking water around. So you get the sense uh, that that there were, that being lean in this world is, is pretty uh, is pretty period specific. So yes and no, but I tend to eat whatever I want. I was on a special diet of South African uh, Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> uh, oysters. I did a lot of rum. Namibian oysters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I ate a lot of kudu and a lot of yes. wildebeest and yes. a lot of king clip. Yes. A sea and lobster. Yes. yes. I was in, as you can see, my body is a temple. <laughs> it's a ruined temple. <laughs> but it's a temple. So we all were in special. We, you guys will have no problem with that. You'll like everything. Well, t tell us about the characters that you play. About the what? The characters that you play. The characters. I mean, first, all right, well, I play Captain Charles Vane, uh, who is a pirate captain uh, and he's a historical figure that really existed in this day and age. And you could go online and, uh, and then buy a bunch of books and you could find out a lot about him. Uh, but what you would find out would be a chronology of ships he took and, uh, you know, when he became a captain in this ship and blah, 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 but you wouldn't find much about uh, the man himself, uh, the only person that he is, how he felt about it, why he did it, where he grew up. Uh, you know, Charles Lane wasn't, uh, a lot of a lot of captains came uh, out of the privateers and out of the Navy. Uh, Charles Lane, there's no record of him being in the, uh, in, in the Navy uh, or, or, you know, in, in a lot of that stuff, so it, it was fun to kind of create. Um, you know, a, a guy that, you know, that, I kind of call him something, like, I kind of call him like the blue collar pirate. Like, he's like, he's kind of like, you know, like, at one point he was like swabbing the decks and he's captain to be a pirate and captain now, but he's just like, he's kind of just like, he, he's, he's, a, he's a man who doesn't like structure, who doesn't like, who has clearly gone the other way from the system. Uh, and uh, he's, he, he's, he's definitely someone who would probably rather be Feared than anything else, um, and, uh, and he's really fun to play. Buddies are always fun to play. <laughs> uh, I play the quartermaster of the ship, uh, Gates, and uh, Mr. Gates is at the centre of a lot of intrigue and, and political machinations because historically, in that period, uh, it was actually a very democratic system. The crew voted in the bosun, and voted in the quartermaster. And they became, particularly the quartermaster, was the nexus of the will of the crew. And if the captain didn't do what the crew wanted, they could vote them out. And so Gates's job, not just because he respects Flint, is probably one of the finest captains he's you know, ever served with, but he's also, they've been friends for a long, long time. And he understands some of Flint's uh, uh, machinations and motivations. And so his job is to balance the different racial, cultural, uh, political groups on the ship and get them all together so that they can serve the will of the captain in battle to succeed in that mission. So it's a, it's a great character to play. I get to be funny, ironic, angry, violent, political. I get to be all of these different facets of, of, a, of the middle management of a military um, operation, which, you know, having served in the military myself when I first talked to... Um, 
John about it. I said, you know, he, he said to me, what do you feel about this character? What's the role of the quartermaster? And I said, well, when I was serving, we had a saying that it's the um, officer who give the orders, but it's the sergeant's mess that carries them out. And that is the middle management job, middle management job of, of uh, non-commissioned officers, is they have to get those men to take risks and throw their lives, basically, into this into a battle and convince them they should try and do sometimes this quite impossible sounding uh, uh, genius goal. So it's something that, um, it's a great part to play. And he's kind of like the inner eye of the audience because he's in the center of a lot of this intrigue. So he's kind of like the reflective you know, eye of, the, of, of what the audience is experiencing. What aspect of uh, playing pirates is the most fun? Like, what's, what's the best part of it? There is no part of being a pirate that isn't fun. <laughs> just the fact that you get to be a pirate <laughs> is, is the most fun to be a pirate. Yeah. Who doesn't want to be a pirate? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, but, you know, to answer it otherwise, too, I mean, kind of like for me, uh, I think, like, or I don't know if it's fun, like the most fun, but I think just like the thing that uh, I've uh, almost like proud about or did, like, to me, I kind of always wanted to, you know, Play, I always wanted to do an on-camera role, uh, you know, doing like an English accent uh, and whatnot. So for me, that's uh, been like a really fun part of it. And, you know, to like go through a day with you know these guys and like shoot a scene and realize that I'm like, I'm all right. Like you know, that, that was kind of one of those fun moments for me. Like going. Like, <laughs> we did. We did. The stupid Americans here doing a fucking. No, you did a really good job, man. You did a good job. It's it's a very difficult thing to do is to act in a different accent. I've done it. I've played Americans before now, and I'm always looking at the American actors, looking at me, going, "That sounds absolutely." <laughs> so no, you did a good job. I don't know about that. We and we did a couple of ensemble scenes that were actually fun, some of the most fun scenes was when we were actually all together in a negotiation situation. And the whole bunch of us are bouncing off each other. All the people who think they're in charge or in the, in, in, different, in the same room is, is, is it, great. The same room is very funny. What's your character's relationship to each other? Because you're the rival captain and you're the yeah, so he's, loyal... So he, yeah, so he is the quartermaster of uh, you know, the walrus and I'm the captain of the ranger. Uh, and the ranger is, you know, there's a bunch of pirate ships and pirate captains in this world and I uh, I'm always kind of you know in, in, if this were a very traditional old show I would be kind of you know, just like the, the antagonist always you know bumping into into uh, into them and that. But, but in reality uh, it, it gets a little dicey and our relationship is is one of kind of mutual respect of each other's abilities um, but also like well, you, you're on the other crew. Jack Rackham is is the quartermaster of your my ship, ship, the Ranger. Yeah. So as would have been, I mean, our, my relationship is with, with we have a relationship with with with, with Jack, with Jack Rackham, Rackham because we are both quartermasters, which is quite a powerful position on the boat. He can't captain the ship without Jack Rackham's support. Because I need like, the crew, or else I need the crew. You can't share one of these things by itself. So it's a, it was a very political, interesting balance of power that they had. So even though they were rivals, they were all outlaws. So they don't do something that is going to bring the whole thing down, yeah. because at some point in the proceedings, we have to support each other in these in these ventures. So it's a very yeah. interesting dynamic. Yeah, like you ever see, you ever see like Goodfellas? Mm -hmm. Remember he's talking about like what the mafia is? And he's like, the, 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 the mafia is just like the police for the, people, the guys who can't go to the police. And like that's kind of the relationship in that way that we have. It's like we don't, we've we've gone outside of the system, so we can't use the system to help us. So the only other people that we can even talk to about whatever problems we're having or whatever's going on are the other people who are doing what we're doing. So we're kind of like you, you know, it's like the enemy of your enemy is your friend. It's kind of right. that kind of situation. So you create your own system. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, essentially, what's great about it is it's what you're saying. You know, it's it's funny that. That uh, a bunch of people who like basically went away from the system, uh, and, you know, a bunch of pirates were the people who brought democracy to the new world. You know? uh, <laughs> so because you know they were the first people who were you know one man one vote you know uh, in the new world. So it's uh, it's kind of funny to think that in some ways our system here, you know, this is 60 years before the American Revolution, this takes place, that our system here may have actually been an extension of what these guys were doing down there. 
Bruce Gates see the impending threat of John Silver? Does he... Uh, I, yeah, uh, well, without giving anything away in the plot, I think Gates' uh, feeling about this whole thing is that he's very antagonistic to Silver uh, because he's, he's aware of all the different things that are, that are functioning within this world. And so he's, um, he's very wary and very distrusting of Johnson. To begin with, in fact, he, he's the first person that finds him on the boat without giving again, any of the plot away. So it's very, um, it's a very interesting dynamic. That's all in the, first, in the first season? That's all in the first season, yeah. And it's great the way they've written the arc of the show. We've talked about this before. Yeah. This is an eight-hour movie, and it's almost changing the paradigm. And it's already going to be an 18-hour movie, because we're doing ten more, so that's nine movies. If you look at the scale of it and the way it's been shot, I mean, Michael Bay is, is not a dummy. I've done four films with Michael was finished on um, Transformers 4 and he has a grasp of what audiences want which I've not seen the like of and I've worked with quite some interesting directors but Michael has got a really brilliant visual mind so when it comes to making a picture big picture work and you've been sucked into it even if it's about giant alien robots that disguise themselves as cars <laughs> people get sucked into that and um, this is of that scale. Everybody we had, from the makeup people that have worked on um, Harry Potter to the second unit action director that had worked on some, like the Bourne films and Gladiator, across the board, the DP that had worked on Transformers with, with, me, with me previously, everybody is of that world. And so the way this thing looks, when you see it projected, it's an eight-hour movie. It's, it's quite epic in its... In its uh, yeah, I just, I just, I just had the uh, pleasure of watching. Uh, I'd seen one, but I had the pleasure of watching two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, about three days ago in France, when we were at Mipcom, and uh, I, mean, I was just like, I can't believe I'm doing this because, uh, oh my God! I'm like, I was like, can I watch the last one? He was like, no, you can't watch that. <laughs> One of those. Really uh, and just to repeat what I know has been John said, but it, 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 some shows you get into and it starts, they have a big opening flashy thing, and you go, what? And then the rest of the show goes, this starts big and gets ginormous. It gets bigger, more complex, more, the relationships become more entangled and entwined and strained and passionate. There's a lot of, uh, it just gets bigger and it gets richer. And it's, um, I don't it even, is the pirate show. Yeah, it is. Mm. And I, I sometimes, like, I watch it sometimes, and I'm like, how would that be pulled this off? Like, I'm like, I'm like, what the? You know, because most of it's shot on a back lot in a, in a studio in, in, uh, in Cape Town. Uh, so it's really quite, like, when you're watching it, you're like, how did, how did this happen? Like, you know, it's really, it's really, it's really fun to be part of what was happening. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Anymore? Have we got, are we all right? I just have one comment. Um, I don't know if you guys know David S. Goyer, but right now, the way you get two are dressed, you would be perfect villains in the next Batman movie. Uh, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, then. Yeah. Well, when does that start shooting? <laughs> Quick. Well, unfortunately, we're, we're unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you.